One of the special days that gave Billy the ability to mark the passing of years was his birthday. A birthday, Billy understood, was the day that a human was born into the world. Because Billy was an animatronic, his birthday was more aptly called his creation day. He informed his mom of the fact that his third year of his... Uh, he in, uh, sorry. He informed his mom of this fact, the third year of his animatronic existence. Billy's dad was still living with Billy and his mom then, and his dad said creation day was absurd. Billy's mom said it was very clever, and from that point on, Billy had creation days. The number of Billy's accumulated creation days was the subject of debate between Billy and his mom. She thought he was created five years before the number of years Billy had tallied. She told him that he'd started as a baby and lived for five years before he became an animatronic. Billy was able to find these years in his memory banks, but the images he had of those years were distorted, as if they belonged in some other animatronic. He concluded, after devoting much of his RAM to this issue, that the five years to which his mum referred were years during which Billy was being constructed. Given that his memory informed him he was complete on the day he watched Freddy and Friends and announced his existence as an animatronic, Billy believed his creation day was that day, not five years before. When he related this reasoning to his mum, she had nodded and said, we have to agree to disagree. Therefore, on Billy's 13th creation day, his mum celebrated his 18th creation day. Yeah, okay. Uh, so from the human perspective, the 18th creation day was a milestone. Accordingly, Billy's mum performed an elaborate celebratory ritual that included a happy creation day banner, 18 silver helium balloons, a variety of foods that fit Billy's animatronic dietary requirements, and a large cake, white with white froth frosting, per those animatronic requirements. Billy, his mum, and Dr. Lingstrom were the only participants in the ritual. They wore silver party hats, spe specially printed with the words, Happy Creation Day, and they sat at the kitchen table, eating the Creation Day meal. Billy, of course, acting no differently than usual. He never did. He was an animatronic. He didn't get excited about anything. His mum and Dr. Lingstrom didn't act excited either. They were quiet and sedate, even when they sang the usual Happy Creation Day song. Neither Billy's mum nor Dr. Lingstrom seemed to enjoy the meal. Billy didn't enjoy it either. It was just what his system required. Therefore, he ingested it. It had taken five years of experimentation for Billy to discover the appropriate foods for his animatronic system. During those years, he ate whatever his mum put on his plate. Like or dislike didn't come into the issue, although his taste sensors indicated some foods were better than others. After the five years testing foods, Billy had concluded that colour had no place in animatronic food. The colours in foods tended to overload his circuits. Therefore, he required all of his food to be white. White? Billy's mum had said the afternoon he'd informed her of his conclusion. She'd been fixing him his usual snack of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I will consume this sandwich, Billy had told her, because social convention dictates that I eat what you have already prepared. But, however... From this point forward, I require all white foods. White, his mum repeated. Animatronics do not efficiently digest colour, Billy told his mum. His mum had stood, walked to the refrigerator and opened it. She spent several seconds staring at its contents. Then she did the same with the cabinets. When she turned around, tears ran down her cheeks. Billy was aware that tears indicated sadness. He, therefore, processed the potential reasons for his mum's unhappiness. It took just a few seconds to conclude that she was unhappy because she didn't have the right foods. She would have to go out and buy them. Billy's mum did go out and buy the foods, and for the last eight years, Billy had eaten nothing but white foods. White flour-based breads and other baked goods, white rice, potatoes, white pasta, white sauces, usually cheese-based, grits, cooked but not browned, chicken or fish or turkey, white mushrooms and onions, cauliflower and apples, peeled of course. Billy's mom was concerned that these foods didn't give Billy enough fibre. He researched the subject and discovered that fibre was something that he needed uh, for the digestive system. Because Billy's animatronic system was designed to be similar to a human's, Billy re reasoned he might require fibre too. 
He therefore asked his mum to purchase a powdered fibre supplement, white of course, which she dissolved in his water or his milk. The same year Billy reached conclusions about his diet, he settled on his appropriate wardrobe as well. Billy's clothing had been something of an issue for, uh, for some time. He had never thought the clothing his mum asked him to wear fit his animatronic presence. Yes, he knew that animatronics could and often did wear costumes, but Billy wanted to be a more autonomous animatronic. He wanted to be set on fire and sold to the world. <laughs> He wanted to dress up as a clown. Um, he required his own unique look. Since Billy knew himself to be made of metal, even if his external appearance didn't appear metallic, he reached the conclusion that various shades of silver and dark grey were required for his clothing. The lines of the clothing had, had to be simple, resembling the sleek, flat surfaces of metal. So, on Billy's 13th, 18th creation day, and his mum and Dr. Lingstrom ate white pasta with white sauce and cauliflower with homemade ranch dressing. It had to be homemade because the store brought variety had too many flecks of green. Billy was satisfied with the meal. The fact that his mum and Dr. Lingstrom left over half their small portions on their plates informed Billy that they found the meal less satisfying than he did. After the obligatory blowing out of the candles on the cake and opening of the presents, which included some additions to his silver and grey wardrobe, and a new laptop computer that his mum said would interface well with his internal processors, Billy thanked his mum and Dr Lingstrom for the creation day celebration, and he left the kitchen to return to his private space in the basement. As Billy reached the door that opened onto the long, steep flight of stairs leading to his space, he learned he heard Dr. Lingstrom speak. Don't you think enough is enough, Vera? Dr. Lingstrom asked. He's 18. It's time for him to go into the group home. The one I told you about has a couple residents with severe delusions. One has lincan... Okay, I have to say this right. Lycanthropy. And one... I'm not putting him in a home, Billy's mum said. This is his home. Uh, by the way, lycanthropy, I know, is uh, people who believe they are werewolves. I believe. So you've had like a child who thought that he was an alien for a year and we've got loads of uh, residents that believe they are werewolves. <laughs> uh, but you've given up so much, Dr. Lingstrom said. You've lost your husband and your social life. You told me yourself that I'm your only remaining friend. And forgive me for being rude, but you don't look so good. You're losing your health too. You think I don't know all that? Billy's mum said. I know, but he's my son. Billy always felt a boost of energy through his systems when he heard his mum say he's my son. It confirmed that he was still properly fulfilling his function as an animatronic designed to be a son. Once Billy's mum concluded her conversation with Dr. Lingstrom, Billy opened the door to the basement. He walked down the stairs to his base. Billy's move from his small bedroom to the larger and more secluded basement had occurred on his 17th, 12th creation day. That was the year he'd informed his mum that an animatronic required isolation and darkness for optimal recharging. Minimal auditory input was needed as well. Billy's bedroom, which was at the front of the house, was too near the street for quiet. Billy's auditory senses were always registering the passage of cars, the barking of dogs and the screaming of playing children. The basement, insulated by its thick cinder block walls and the earth that surrounded them, muffled much of the exterior sounds. In the basement, Billy's networks were given the silence necessary to shut down and reboot every day. When Billy set up his own personal recharge and service area in the basement, he'd done so with placid tranquility in mind. Removing the old shag brown carpeting and disposing of stored boxes and second-hand furniture, Billy had scrubbed the basement's cement floor and its cinder block walls. Both of these surfaces were naturally grey, so Billy didn't paint them. He moved his metal recharging platform to the basement and he requested that his mum buy him a metal table and chair for his information download section. This was where his computer and the books he was currently reading were kept. After his 13th, 18th creation day celebration, Billy went directly to his download station. He wanted to update his knowledge base to include the definition of lycanthropy. Oh, there we go. Not long after Billy's 13th creation day, on a morning that Billy's senses informed him was windy and rainy, Billy opened the door at the top of the basement stairs. He walked purposefully, as usual, to the kitchen to await the morning's hot cereal. 
When Billy left his recharging, when sorry, when Billy left his charging station in the mornings to go to the kitchen for his morning nourishment, he always heard his mum moving around in the room. He would hear her clinking dishes or running water or closing cabinet doors. This morning, however, he didn't hear any of those. Billy's auditory senses reported to him the sound of the rain thrumming on the roof and the sound of heavy sheets of rainwater being slapped against the living room windows. From out in the street, he heard the shh of car tyres sl slicing through the rain on the pavement. But these sounds were all his senses were receiving. Billy, his systems flipping through subfolders to find a potential reason for his mum's silence, came up with no explanation for what he was hearing or not hearing. He therefore walked into the kitchen to gather more data. Nothing in the kitchen, however, was useful. The kitchen looked, as it always did, yellow and white, neat and tidy. From his reading, Billy had concluded that his mum was a good housekeeper. She kept everything clean and orderly. Still seeking data to explain the unusual morning, Billy opened the door leading into the garage. The family car was in the garage, his mum was not. Billy went down the hall to his mum's room. As it always did during the day, the door to her room stood open. When Billy looked in, he found the room empty, the bed made. Billy went down the hall to look in his mum's office. It too was as organised as always. All books and files stood neatly on white shelves or in white filing cabinets, and it too lacked his mum. Billy looked into his old bedroom. It was empty. He'd already looked into the living room and the dining room. This left the bathroom. Billy walked down the hall and hesitated in front of the bathroom door. One of Billy's larger sub-programs was the one assigned to human manners and behaviour. In order to be a son, Billy had to properly perform a son's functions. This meant doing what human boys, and as the years went by teens, did properly. One of the things in this subroutine was the fact that it was wrong to walk in on your mum when she was in the bathroom. The bathroom door was closed, because she wasn't in any other room in the house. Probably suggested his mum was in the bathroom. Billy knocked on the bathroom door. Mom? Billy called through the closed door. It is Billy. Are you coming to the kitchen to prepare my breakfast? Billy's mum did not answer. Billy's auditory processes were having trouble determining for certain because of the noise interference from the rain and wind but no sounds seemed to be coming from the bathroom. If his mum was in the room, she was silent. Billy did a quick run through the systems assigned to unusual occurrences. These systems included subfolders filled with information on emergencies. Billy had gotten the information from several books. After shifting through his databanks, Billy concluded he had to enter the bathroom. His mum might need his help. Billy lifted a sturdy hand and knocked on the door again. When he received no response, he opened it. As soon as Billy opened the bathroom door, his senses were overwhelmed with a variety of input. Although part of the information was normal, his olfactory senses reported that the, loom, that the room had a lavender scent, which it always did after his mum was in the room. Most of what his senses recorded were things he'd never encountered before. All this new information came through his visual senses. Billy's visual senses informed Billy that the gleaming white bathtub was filled with water, almost to the brim. Billy's mum was in the water, or more accurately, she was under the water. Billy could see his mum's face just beneath the surface of the still, clear liquid, his mum's blonde hair wafted around her head, partially obscuring her staring eyes. Her body, unclothed, something Billy had never seen before, was limp. Billy's extensive reading had installed in his database what he needed to conclude that his mum was dead. But why? Billy had learned that humans always wanted to know why a person had died. Billy turned away from his mum's corpse and looked at the rest of the room. Outside, thunder rumbled as Billy's senses registered an empty drinking glass on the grey granite counter by the sink. He noticed the open medicine cabinet. Billy reached a conclusion and filed the information in the appropriate file, he then did what his databases told him was the right thing to do in this situation. He left the bathroom and went to the phone to dial 911. So sad. So, honestly, so upsetting. I've got a tear on my eye. Oh. 
One of the things Billy's mum had downloaded into Billy's databases not long before she died was the imperative that Billy no longer inform people that he was an animatronic. Billy's robotic identity, she told him, must from that point on be a secret. I'm going to update your programming, his mum had told him. She picked up his silver hairbrush and began brushing Billy's thick brown hair. This was how Billy's mum always changed his programming. She had explained this to him the first year of his existence as an animatronic. When she brushed his hair, she told him his hardware received its updates. The update regarding Billy's secret robot identity had two parts. First, Billy was to keep his animatronic nature to himself. Second, he was to do his best to mimic normal human behaviour when he had to be around people. But I am an animatronic, Billy had said while his mum installed his new programming. I understand that, his mum had said. However, from now on, others don't need to know that. Because of this programming, Billy didn't inform the police and other officials who came in response to his 911 call that he was an animatronic. Some of them, however, already knew. The town Billy lived in was small, and he was the only animatronic living in it. Anyone who had lived in the town for long knew of Billy. The day Billy's mum died, though, no one spoke to him about what he was. Everyone who came to the house just went about their business and left, speaking to Billy very little. Only one young female EMT asked Billy if he was going to be alright. He'll be fine, Fran, another older EMT said, tugging on Fran's arm. Come on, let's get out of here. Billy's face recognition programming informed him that the older EMT was the father of a boy Billy used to call a friend. Billy considered telling the man to say hi to his son. This kind of communication was in Billy's social skills rub subroutines which I need, uh, <laughs> but he concluded that emergency situation protocols trumped social protocols. Billy said nothing as the EMTs left the house with his mum's body. He just closed and locked the door and went into the bathroom to clean it. That was what his mum would have wanted him to do. He then went down to the basement. He needed to interface with his computer so he could read the file that his mum had told him to read if she died. Billy sat in his gleaming silver metal chair, and he accessed his, fro his computer's files. As he waited for the one that he wanted to open, his memory banks brought up the image of his mum telling him about the file. They'd been sitting at the table eating. Billy had been eating rice and chicken and cauliflower. His mum had been eating tiny bites of a package meal that she'd taken from the freezer and microwaved. At one point, Billy's mum had set down her fork. She turned and looked directly at Billy. Billy, there's something you need to add to your database, she had said. Billy had stopped eating. He'd focused on his mum's words so he could integrate whatever she said into his system. Before dinner, I emailed you a file, Billy's mum said. Her face scrunched up unusually for a moment. Then it returned to its most recent normal. She cleared her throat. You are not to open the file unless I am dead. She squinted at Billy. Does that compute? Billy nodded. Do not open the file unless you are dead. Billy's mum wiped her eyes. Right, just download the file to your computer and keep it. If I die, read the file. It will have the next set of updates you'll need. Billy had nodded and given his mum his programmed polite response. Thank you, mum. Now Billy opened the file. The file was a big one. It took some time for Billy to read it. It was full of information Billy had not had before. It was useful information. Now that his mum was dead, the file informed Billy he had to be a different animatronic. He could no longer be an animatronic son. He had to be an animatronic adult. This required a completely different set of subroutines than the son animatronic had. His mum's file installed those subroutines. It gave him instructions on how to purchase what he needed to eat and care for at home. Uh, how to cook food, how to shop online, how to pay bills, how to hire people to take, take care of the house the yard and the car. It informed him that he had a substantial financial account, an inheritance, that would fund his needs for the rest of his life. This had come from investments, something that Billy understood because he continued to read books on the subject after those first books were too old for him. Billy immediately began acting on his new programming. He became an animatronic adult. Over the next year, which Billy noted only because... Wait, over the next year, which Billy noted only because the other houses in his neighbourhood put out the lights on their trees, signifying the arrival of Christmas, Billy's adult animatronic existence was focused primarily on mastering his new programming. 
He had learned much, but he found that he needed to practice what he'd learned many times to become fr proficient at executing it. Once Billy was comfortable with his new knowledge and skills, uh, he discovered that he was experiencing what felt like incoherence in his system. Billy's reading suggested that his incoherence might have been a condition called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance, Billy had learned, was the mental unrest that occurred when a being, usually human, held conflicting beliefs or attitudes. The reason Billy concluded that he had this condition was that his senses were reporting to him two states of reality that were at odds with each other. Billy, being an animatronic, didn't exactly have beliefs or attitudes, but he did have a sense of self, and he was beginning to recognise that his sense of self was fractured. On the one hand, Billy knew himself to be a robot. On the other hand, his sensory experience of himself was that of a human being. In other words, Billy was a robot, but his physical systems were like those of a human. This was becoming more and more unsettling to Billy. He decided he had to do something about it. Billy's decision to create coherence was a catalyst for a lot of research over the coming days. How could he, con how could he create consistency between what he knew himself to be and what his senses reported him to be? After reading and exploring potential options, Billy concluded that he needed to replace his human appearing arms and legs with limbs that were more animatronic-like. From what Billy concluded based on his research, this meant he needed to switch out his current arms and legs for prosthetic arms and legs. This, Billy learned after even more research, required surgery. Thanks to his mom, Billy was familiar with seeking services from other humans. He knew how to use the computer he knew how to use the computer to look for what he needed. He did this now, finding a list of surgeons in his area. Starting with the top name on the list, he dialed the assigned number. When a friendly woman's voice answered the phone, Billy stated his needs. Hello, my name is Billy. I am seeking a surgeon who will remove my arms and legs and replace them with the prosthetics. Billy's auditory senses registered the sound of a gasp coming through the phone. The woman, not sounding as friendly, asked, Why do you need all your limbs removed? Do you have a systematic infection? Billy ran this question through his processor. No, I have no infection. I have cognitive dissonance, and my limbs are not consistent with my identity. Billy was careful not to say that his identity was animatronic, because he was still running his mum's programming regarding ki keeping his robotic nature a secret. A dial tone suddenly buzzed in Billy's ear. This informed him that the woman had hung up. Billy moved on to the next number. Forty minutes later, Billy had gone through every surgeon in the region surrounding his small town. He had received, reg uh, he had received responses similar to the first one from every office he called. What was the next logical step? Billy got up and lay down on his recharging station. He felt like his systems were depleted. Perhaps when he rebooted, he would be able to find the surgeon he needed. The process that led Billy to a surgeon ended up being far more protracted than the steps of his original plan. This was because his current programming was deficient in the intricacies of how surgery and the medical system in general functioned. Billy had to access an extensive network of new databases before he located a surgeon who agreed to perform the required operations in a city within driving distance. Billy concluded, after an exhaustive search, that licensed surgeons would not perform the surgeries Billy required. Logically, Billy decided this meant that an unlicensed surgeon might be able to provide the needed service. Accordingly, Billy began searching for such a surgeon, searching for su such a surgeon, sorry, and he found one, a disreputable uh, doctor who had lost his license because of malpractice lawsuits related to unspecified substance abuse and health issues. He was willing to do any surgeries asked of him, if the fee satisfied him. When Billy's data downloads led him to the man, just call me Doc, the fee requested was well within the budget Billy had assigned to his project. This isn't going to happen overnight, you know, Doc told Billy over the phone after he agreed to proceed with Billy's plan. Doc coughed heavily. Every time we lop off a limb, your body will need time to recover. You won't be able to be fitted with a prosthetic until the stump is healed. Doc coughed again. The sound was loud and crackly to Billy's auditory processes. You'll need someone to help you while you heal. Doc went on. 
And when you get your prosthetic, you'll need physical therapy to adapt to it. I will not require healing time or therapy, Billy told the doctor. What? Are you superhero human or something? Doc asked. Billy wanted to explain that he was an animatronic, but that would have gone against his programming. Therefore, he just said, I am Billy, and I will adapt easily. Doc laughed, which triggered a cascade of coughing. Finally, he said, Yeah, well, humor an old man. I'm going to set up the back room and call in my squeeze Norma to take care of you if you need it. Norma's retired, used to be a nurse. Sometimes she helps me out. She can do it all, recovery and physical therapy. Doc laughed in a way Billy had never heard before. The sound was similar to that of a machine gun fire Billy's auditory sensor had picked up from the TV. Multi-talented, my Norma, Doc said. Doc gave Billy an address, and Billy told Doc he would arrive the next day. Doc coughed again and said, I'll be waiting.